Well, good morning and welcome to another Lady Grove thought for the day. Um, this is my second attempt at this. The sound wasn't too good on my first attempt. And as you know from, um, if you've looked at my YouTube clip from yesterday, yesterday I was over there, the other side of the garden, when I happened to spot this lovely flower on this unknown shrub. Um, and it just really struck me. Um, and you may be thinking, Hugh, it's a flower. But to me, it's more than that, because as you can see, or maybe you can't see, the uh, leaves on this um, shrub are not looking the best. They're all curled up and they've got some sort of horrible virus or disease on them. Um, and this is actually the only flower on the whole shrub. And it got me thinking about um, uh, some, well, several Bible passages in, in the Gospels that um, talk about some of Jesus' experiences with different people. And I would just like to read one from Mark chapter 7. Starting to read at verse 24, it says, Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, For such a reply you may go. The demon has left your daughter. Then she went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. The passage is uh, marked or titled in, in my Bible as Jesus honours a Syrophoenician woman's faith. Um, but I've always looked at this and thought, hang on a minute, what on earth was Jesus doing referring to her as a dog in the first place? In Jesus' times, in the, in the um, Jewish culture, dogs were unclean animals. This was quite an insult. Jesus, for all intents and purposes, was being racist. Very similar to what some rather right-wing people might refer to people of, of colour or different ethnicity today. How does that fit in with our understanding of Jesus? Well, I suppose firstly we need to remember that Jesus was very much a person of his time. And it was the done thing in those days for a Jew to regard a Gentile as as unclean. But I also wonder if Jesus was looking for the flowers. Similarly when he meets um, the Canaanite woman at the well, there they are having a theological discussion, when Jesus just tosses in that comment, go and tell your husband, and it gives her the opening to actually acknowledge the guy I'm living with is, is not really my husband. To me, it's a sign that Jesus was perhaps saying, let's see, let's see how serious this person is. Let's see if they really are searching. Let's see how honest and humble they can be. The Syrophoenician woman doesn't have a strop at him, doesn't tell him where to stick his his miracles, but rather just expresses her faith that she feels that she deserves at least the crumbs under the table. The Canaanite woman had the courage to sort of say, yeah, I, I, my life isn't what it ought to be and I'm living with someone that I shouldn't be. Of course for us people who have come to faith and would describe ourselves as Christians, then we're a bit of a step further on from the Canaanite woman and the Syrophoenician woman. But I wonder how often we think about ourselves. 
and see only the leaves. Scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives, sanctifying us, transforming us, making us more like Christ. But we could become impatient with that. We can look at ourselves and just see our failings when we have a strop at our other half, when we tell the, the kids up um, and have a go at them, when we do things that really aren't good. It's then that we need to remind ourselves that Jesus is looking for the little blossoms in our lives. Transformation, sanctification is a lifelong performance, a lifelong act. We need to be patient with ourselves just as God is patient with us. And rather than spending all our times beating ourselves up, because we still have lots of leaves that need sorting out. Let us celebrate when we see a little blossom in our lives. And of course, the challenge therefore is when other people are widened some, when they seem to be a shrub of curled up, withered, disease ridden leaves. That's when we need to look for the flowers or even just the buds that might be coming up in their lives. And perhaps God encourages us to use words and actions that might draw out those little signs in the lives of others as well. Let's pray. So Father, we thank you for your creation. We thank you for its beauty. We thank you for this plant. We thank you that even, even when it does look so manky in so many different ways, there's those little signs of hope as this flower blossoms. And Lord, we thank you that you are patient with us. You see more than just the curled up leaves, those viruses in us, those bad habits, those unkind things. You seek out the signs of hope and growth and little openings. Lord, may we be open to your Spirit's work in our lives to bring about more change, to help us to become more like the Jesus and more like the person that you know that we can be. And similarly, Lord, we see, we see so many unkind things going on in the world around us. And, and in daily life but help us not to focus on them help us to, to look at the signs of goodness and today we can celebrate the real act of kindness by the um, care home with that elderly gentleman in, his, in their care where they have provided him with a pillow with the face of his deceased wife on it so that he doesn't just have a a photograph to look at but actually has a, a pillow of her as well. We thank you for that, that simple act of compassion and love and we pray that you would give us opportunities even in this period of lockdown to share your love and kindness with others. And we continue to pray for our Lord. We pray for our doctors and nurses, all our medical staff. We pray that they would have the necessary protection they need to keep them safe as, as they are doing this incredible work. We thank you for resources that are needed, not just in this country, but across this world, to help us to battle this. We pray for patience for, for all those in authority as they question when to, to ease this lockdown and how to do it. We pray that you will grant them wisdom and understanding that nothing will be rushed too quickly and that we won't have a, a second of attack of this, of this illness and that we will all be patient and particularly pray for those whose, whose jobs are on the line and who are, are scared of losing their jobs or losing their businesses that there would be um, compassion expressed in a way of support by, by governments to help us through this difficult time and Lord we pray for those 
those people who are struggling with illness at this moment, not just for COVID-19, but for other illnesses and stuff. They are fighting. We pray that you would be with them, that your healing hand would be touching them. And we pray for their families and friends who are worried and possibly, or most often, are kept separate from them, that you would just bring them comfort. And let's just spend a moment in quiet as we think about those things on our mind at this time. Lord, we thank you that you are there with us, that the signs of hope that you see in us are also a sign that you are working and that you are present. And let us hang on to those signs of hope as well, Lord. If we ask all this in Jesus' name, Amen. And let's close with the Lord's Prayer as we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we had a good first session of the Bible course yesterday with several people joining us. Um, in case you want to do it uh, but couldn't do um, during the day, just a reminder that we do have another course starting roughly at 7.30 this evening, which you'll be very welcome to. Um, we might probably run it a little bit later than that because I'm conscious that some people may have a bit of a struggle to, to get everything sorted by 7.30. So um, if you're a bit late, don't worry. We'll hang on for you if you want to come along to it. Just drop me a message and I will send you the link to the um, necessary Zoom page and stuff. And other than that, we'll enjoy today, enjoy the weather, and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow for another thought. Thank you.